Welcome back to my channel, I'm James. Today I've got an advanced review and we're gonna be deep diving into the Train on 4K Ultra HD and Thunderbolt and Lightfoot on 4K Ultra HD. Kino Lorber did send these to me about three weeks early for review for me to dive into, test, and analyze these for all of you. And as always, I do appreciate when studios send things to me early for review, but it never changes my testing results or analysis and review scores on any release. As most of you know that have followed me for a while, I'm always going to be upfront and honest and provide all of the results accurately to you. Now, I'm going to be doing my exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparison analysis on both of these releases where I show you the native images pulled directly from these discs right up above. And then at the end, I'll always let you know my review score to let you know the sum up analysis of the quality of both of these box sets and if there's something you should buy and add to your collection. So make sure you wait till the end of each of these reviews before you decide you're gonna buy or add these to your collection. Now, if after you get done watching this review, you decide you're gonna buy either of these and add these to your collection, I posted the direct sale links from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section right below. Let's take you straight out to Amazon. They're on sale for the same price as everywhere. And by clicking on those links, you help to support the creation of these exclusive videos just a tiny bit. So make sure if you're gonna buy any of these, click on those links I posted right down below. To start off with, we're going to talk about the train from 1964. Now in comparison to the previous Blu-ray release, something you're noticing right away is how much the lights and darks on this new 4K release really just are brilliant. It has brilliant whites, inky blacks, no black crush. On the previous Blu-ray release, because it doesn't have Dolby Vision and HDR10, that's where these 4Ks for black and white films really make a massive improvement. Because those brilliant whites and inky blacks you get with that really make the black and white image seem almost 3D looking. It's not that it actually is, it's kind of what your mind does because it gets really deep in that image because of those multi layers and shades that go down to that very deep inky blacks with that brilliant white coming out of the screen at you. So it's one of those effects that I think works really well and that's where 4K releases of black and white films can really have a stunning effect. The train really does have a great implementation of Dolby Vision and HDR10. Now if you've followed my channel for a while you'll know that I love John Frankenheimer. He was a great filmmaker. I previously reviewed his previous releases of Ronin and The Manchurian Candidate. The Manchurian Candidate is another black and white film by John Frankenheimer. Ronin was a color one. Love both of those films. If you have not checked out my exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparison review, you're gonna wanna go check that out. After you get done with this video, you're gonna wanna go check out those after this because this is another great mystery, thriller, action adventure from John Frankenheimer that is a great film that you need to experience. It came out in 1964, holds up very well today. To this day, it is still a great World War II film that I love watching, though I will say this 4K release is the best way I've ever viewed it. I was wondering how much of an upgrade it'd be over the previous Blu-ray release because the previous Blu-ray was pretty darn good. The thing that really shines through with this 4K release is the stability in the film grain. There is much more stability in that film grain, less fluctuations that there was in the previous Blu-ray release. Though I will say on the negative side, you still will have at the edges of your image the fading out. That is due to the age of the film, the damage on the film, and basically, unless they spent billions of dollars trying to restore those brief little edges, it's like, I don't know, half of an inch at the sides of your screen on each side where the film is slightly faded a little more in the black and white film. That's just the way it is. It's been that way on all the Blu-ray. It's just one of those things that basically you just gotta live with it and accept it because this is the best way this has ever looked. And they fixed a lot of the things like speckles that were on the previous Blu-ray. They've been fixed. You no longer see those on this. It has a much more detailed image and depth to the image due to, like I said, the HDR10 and Dolby Vision implementation. Now, this is a native 4K 2160p, and it has an English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 and 2.0 audio mixes. Now, I can tell you it sounds very good, though there is still some slight like clicks and hisses and just slight audio anomalies. They existed on the previous Blu-ray, 
Those are still present on this, which tells me it's in the original audio files. And that's just the way it is. It does sound good. You can hear everything fine. There is just due to the time period of the filming and basically some slight audio hisses and clicks you will hear in the audio fluctuations just slightly. Now it's not one of those things where the audio goes up and down constantly. You got to turn it up and down constantly. It's just that the audio fluctuations are like when someone's talking and you'll hear a sound effect and there'll be like a little clicking sound just very briefly very, very few times in the film. But if you pay attention, you know what you're listening for, you'll hear a few of them. But they're not horrible, I just wanted to point them out so you are aware of them. If you've ever owned the previous Blu-ray, you'll know what I'm talking about, they've always been there. Those are still present. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now, showing what you get in this, you get this really nice first pressing slip cover. I've talked about this a lot. I get a lot of questions asking me, why is it when I ordered this, there wasn't a slip cover? It's because you ordered it after the first pressings. If you pre-order these through the links I post below, since it's not out yet, or if you buy it right around release date, you'll get a slip cover, which is limited edition. After that, when they go out of print, you get these without the slip covers, just the cases underneath. I love collecting these Kino Lorber limited edition slip covers. They look really nice on your bookcases when you display them. Now. On the side here, it does say the train in yellow. On the back, it talks about it here. You do get all your special features from the previous Blu-ray release. Nothing is missing. Now, showing you what you get in this. This is where a treat comes in. Kino Lorber went the extra mile to give us a little booklet in here. I really liked this. And I'm really hoping this is a sign for things to come in the future with Kino Lorber, that they include more and more of these booklets because they do add to the collectability factor of this and how cool these are. It has pictures in it. It has in here, it's basically about five pages, talks about the film, how it was filmed, things about the film, what made it unique, the director talking about obviously the Manchurian Candidate, which is another one I reviewed as I talked about at the beginning of this video. But it talks about the film, things about it behind the scenes, and then it talks about the cast at the back. I do like these little booklets, and I really think this is an awesome little piece of collectible memorabilia that Kino Lorber stuck into this set, which makes this even cooler. Now, for your disc, 4K, 100% region free, no issues playing it anywhere worldwide. Now, getting to the rough average bitrate, I dived into this one and I can tell you for this one, it had a shockingly high and extremely strong and stable rough average bitrate of 94 megabytes per second. Wow. Getting to my review score. For John Frankenheimer's The Train on 4K Ultra HD, this gets a superb 9.3. This is a must buy. You need to buy, add to your collection. Don't miss out on this. I loved the new slip cover. I loved the booklet they included in this. Another stellar job by Kino Lorber with their transfer on 4K Ultra HD. Again, lending to why this is the best way to view this film ever. Bitrate, the implementation, they did an amazing job with the lights to darks and implementation on this black and white film. It really does make black and white films look outstanding if done correctly. There are so many cool things in this set that lend to why this is a must buy, must own 4K Ultra HD release of a classic World War II film that I absolutely love. And as I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to check out some of John Frankenheimer's other great films, check out The Manchurian Candidate and Ronin. I've done those exclusive reviews here on this YouTube channel. You'll want to go check out both of those reviews after you get done with this video. This is one of those. It's a must buy. You want to buy and add to your collection. Let me know in the comment section below. Are you excited for this? Did you like the little booklet that's in this? Did you think that was a really cool touch? I did. I absolutely love that little booklet they included in this and it made this a really cool collectible. Really like what Kino Lorber did with this. Outstanding job. They got a superb 9.3 for this 4K release. Let me know if you're excited to buy this and watch this now. Let me know if you like John Frankenheimer. Start that conversation down there below. If you're gonna buy this and add this to your collection now, I put that direct sale link from Amazon right below. Make sure to use those links down there below. Those help to support the creation of these videos just a tiny bit, but they never cost you, the viewer, even a penny extra when you click on those links. So make sure to click down below. Next up, we have Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, a Clint Eastwood 1974 classic film. It's a very fun film. And I will tell you, this is one of those. I was thrilled when they announced it was coming out on 4K Ultra HD. 
Kino Lorber did a brand new 4K scan from the original camera negatives to create this native 4K 2160p transfer. I can tell you this does have Dolby Vision and HDR10. Between the Dolby Vision and HDR10 though, in this case, the Dolby Vision was about 7% better looking than what your HDR10 was. So if you do have Dolby Vision, you will notice the Dolby Vision does look the best on this. Colors were just a bit more vibrant, skin tones just a bit better looking on the Dolby Vision. HDR10 still looks amazing over the previous Blu-ray, but I'm just saying in preference wise, Dolby Vision was where it was at for me. Now, as I was saying, Kino Lorber went back and did a brand new 4K scan of the original 35 millimeter camera negatives to create this native 4K. It lends to why this has so much more detail present in the image, like on faces and clothing, than was present on the previous Blu-ray releases. You can notice it right from the beginning of the film all the way to the end. Though I will say there is one thing that is still present on this, which tells me it was present on the original camera negatives, is there is some slight color variations and fluctuations. You'll notice it kind of at the beginning scene when it's opening with the title intro, you'll notice there is some slight variations in the colors there where it's first starting to come in. And there's a couple of scenes throughout the films where you do notice skin tone slightly changing from a more normal skin tone to slightly gray to back to normal. But it's not consistent throughout the whole thing fluctuations, just very briefly for a few scenes throughout the film. But again, compared to the previous Blu-ray, even those blow it away because the previous Blu-rays were all very dull and drab looking. Throughout the entire presentations, the previous Blu-rays were just never really, I don't know, I wouldn't really say they were beautiful images. They weren't beautiful to look at. It just kind of always presented a kind of more dull and drab experience for the film. This does not look that way. This really has some nice colors and it looks lifelike for once where you don't feel like you're watching kind of a dull movie. It looks really nice filmic has film grain from beginning to end. They did not DNR it away or take it away at all. It's nicely filmic from beginning to end, though there are fluctuations in the film grain. The film grain does fluctuate a little more than in some other releases that I've reviewed. And that'll be reflected in the review score when I get to it at the end here. But other than that, the film grain is present in it. Just you will notice there are some more fluctuations than is normal in some releases that I've reviewed. Now, if you want to check out some other Clint Eastwood 4K Ultra HD releases, another really good one that I love is Escape from Alcatraz. If you have not checked out that 4K release, you need to go watch that review after you get done with this one. That is a stellar Clint Eastwood film that I absolutely love. And you'll want to check out that 4K review. I did an exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray review here on my channel previously. I've been going through and reviewing all of these Clint Eastwood 4K releases and I look forward to when each one of these come out because I absolutely love Clint Eastwood as an actor. He did a great job over his career and I love the kind of tough guy, rough guy, like hard exterior he always had and it really lends to why I enjoy his films. I think he did a really good job with that rough, gruff, tough guy exterior and it shines through on every one of his films, including this one, and I like that element of it. Now, for the audio, you get an English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 and 2.0 mixes. I will tell you the 5.1 was where it was at for me. It's very clean, it's very clear. I could hear everything with dialogue. I didn't have any issues with massive fluctuations where I had to turn it up or turn it down. I didn't have any issues with the audio at all. It's a very enjoyable mix. I think it lends to the film well. It's not a Dolby Atmos, but it doesn't have to be. To be honest with a film like this, it just sounds very good. You can hear everything, you can hear everything going on, which is what you really want out of an audio mix. It's very clean and clear without those fluctuations. Now, I'll show you what you get in this. This one is unique. It comes with this first pressing slipcover, as I've talked about with Kino Lorber. But in this one, it's a very unique limited edition slipcover. Here's why. You get three different cover artworks. You have this one on the slipcover, which is only on the slipcover. Once this goes out of print, you won't get this artwork again. Then you have this artwork, which is on the inside of the case. And then you get this artwork as well. So I do like that Kino Lorber gave us three different collectible artworks on this set. Though this slipcover will go out of print and it is a limited edition artwork. Once this is gone, you only get the two artworks that are on this basically reversible cover artwork. This one will be gone. I like this one the best. The outside slipcover is my favorite of their cover artworks. I really thought this one was really cool. But you do get those options. Inside here, you get your Blu-ray disc and you get your 4K Ultra HD. 4K disc is 100% region free. 
no issues whatsoever. You can play it anywhere worldwide. So if you're wanting to import or buy this, I put that direct link from Amazon right below. Now, talking about some of the special features, you do get an audio commentary for the love of characters feature it with director Michael Camino, radio and TV spots, and your theatrical trailer. So you do get a nice selection of special features in this. I will say overall though, the skin tones, the color grading, and the HDR10 implementation is what I enjoyed the most of this because it made this film that always looked really drab and dull to me come to life and made it feel like I was watching a film that was filmed more recently and lifelike. Like no, the clothing in the cars isn't from this time period, but it did make it look like an interject life into it that the people look alive for once in this where their skin tones look alive. Whereas I said before in the previous Blu-ray, they just kind of looked more grayish and dull overall. And everyone kind of had a more less alive, just otherworldly look to them. That's gone on this. The skin tones on this are absolutely superb with that new color grading and master they did. Now, getting to the rough average bitrate, this had an extremely high, extremely strong and stable rough average bitrate of 96 megabytes per second. Wow, another shocker from Kino Lorber. They are doing an amazing job not compressing these films down, giving them plenty of room to breathe on 4K Ultra HD and doing amazing jobs with the transfers. Getting to my review score, this gets a very good 9.1. It's a must buy, one you wanna buy and add to your collection, but you'll understand it's a 9.1. Those fluctuations are present on it because that is present on the original film elements as is noticeable on all the previous Blu-ray, so, you can understand that that is why it gets that 9.1. It's a great release, very good job from Kino Lorber. Bitrate was amazing, though keep in mind I will point out one thing that a lot of people are going to say when they watch this. There is a lot of scenes in this where they used camera lenses and film elements to make it look softer and kind of hazier on purpose. The film grain is still present and naturally present in it and the image looks good, but those scenes where they use those camera lenses and film elements intentionally are always going to have a more hazy dreamlike appearance intentionally. Those aren't gonna go away. It's not something wrong with this release, that's why that doesn't affect the review score because that's how it was intentionally done by the original director when he released this film. But this is the ultimate way to own and watch Thunderbolt and Lightfoot on home video. This one is one if you like Clint Eastwood, you like classic films, don't miss out on this one. Buy this one and add this to your collection. I put that direct sale link from Amazon right down below as a pinned comment. So if you're gonna buy it, make sure to click on that. Let me know how excited you are for another stellar Clint Eastwood 4K Ultra HD release. It's a very good release from Kino Lorber. As I said, it's one of those things, other than those slight nitpicky things, I was happy with this. I was happy this got such a nice 4K release and I enjoyed it. This is one I'm glad to have in the collection now. Let me know if you're a big Clint Eastwood fan. Start that conversation down there below and let me know if you're gonna buy either of these, if either of these are exciting to you. What of these you're excited are on 4K now and what of these you're excited got good review scores? Start that conversation down there below. If these videos have helped you out and you enjoy these exclusive comparison reviews I release here on my YouTube channel, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club. It only costs you, the viewer, a couple of bucks every month less than the price of a cup of coffee, but that's the only way I can continue to create videos like this. Through my VIP Collectors Club, and when you use those Amazon links I post down below, that's the tiny bit of support I can get to continually create these. I can only do it with you, my viewers and subscribers support. So make sure if you're gonna buy any of the releases I review, always go down and use the links below and join my Collectors VIP Club. It's very, very important for me to be able to continue doing this for many years to come. I need every single one of your support through using the links below and my Collector's VIP Club. And I wanna say thank you to all my current VIP Club members and all of you that currently support this channel. I really do appreciate every single one of you. As always, make sure to go down there and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. I truly hope all of you have a blessed day and I've always got something new, early, exclusive, and exciting coming out very soon.